That's one of the best podcasts ever. Ever. Top five dead or alive. I'm your host, Tony, in the Ministry of Silly Talks with Graham in the building, as usual. Hi, and hello to people who may or may yeah. not be oh, seeing yeah. us. Yeah, we're doing a video for Pod Caviar oh, now. Right. This works out pretty well. Oh, oh hey. Oh, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're looking at some shirts right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Listen, Sweet. we got shirtcaviar.com is a place to get these fly shirts. We got Graham with the Lizard Person shirt. Which is a collaboration between our two podcasts, One Gram RV and Pod Caviar. Subscribe to both of those for free, for free. Or we're going to come see you and make you do it in person and stab the other people that are in your house to death. We're spilling blood. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Uh, yeah, and I have one, uh, Never Mild. It's the uh, spiciest shirt on the site. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Fuck. Sorry. You've seen hot ones, yeah. but have you worn hot ones? Nah, oh, not good. unless you buy the Never Mild shirt from shirtcaviar.com. But this yeah. feels like I've corrupted someone because you're like, I have a video now. <laughs> yeah, I have a video now. I got to show off. Camera. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, we got another great show coming up today. I was going to do something else, but then this morning I came across a great story and we're going to talk about it. I'm, I don't know anything, but I am <laughs> fucking horrified. Uh, I know we like to talk about space travel. We love to talk about space. We did. We talked about the moon landings here recently we talked about seeing the picture of a black hole we talk about all yep. sorts of conspiracies dealing with um all sorts of weird things lizard people being yep, from space being one of them yeah. yeah today we're going to talk about project pluto it yeah. is a very interesting project that was uh it came about during the cold war era mm -hmm. and um with it being project pluto you can only assume that it has something to do with nasa and the planet pluto but it doesn't Mm. Cause we're talking about killing people with nukes. Oh God damn it! And irradiating a whole country and wiping it off the map and making it uninhabitable for the foreseeable future. We were you. We started and you were like, you know, something we talk a lot about: space, yep. science. Mm -hmm. We tend to make fun of yeah. conspiracy theories because conspiracy yep. theories are fun. They are by nature. Yeah. The other thing that we unfortunately talk about on both of our podcasts, mm -hmm. time after time, it will never go away, never is go complete away. nuclear annihilation yep. of all human life on this planet. Yeah, yeah. Thought I was going to skirt past that one? Nah. Hey, we're back. Nah, we're heading Bye. head first back into it. Bye. Yeah. All right, I'm ready. Here we go. Hey, the... <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is going to be like falling off a log. That's yeah. how hard this is going to be. Project Pluto, a.k.a. The, frying, the Flying Crowbar, is a locomotive-sized missile um, and that was powered by a nuclear uh, reactor-driven scramjet. Now, for those of you who don't know what a scramjet is, it is a an engine that is it is made of little to no moving parts it takes the air from the front and it heats it up and it expands and it shoots it out the back that's how it gets its uh propulsion, propeller its yeah. propulsion right uh for those of you who aren't familiar with regular jet engines that you see on planes there's a we, we break it down to the simplest form which is suck squeeze bang and blow which is they suck the air in the front they squeeze it they compress it and they ignite it, and then it blows out the back, and that's how you get your propulsion. Right. That's what makes jet engines go. That's what makes planes fly and all that shit, and along to, with speed. And it's also lift. what makes your car's engine function. That too. You yeah. Know what I mean, it's yeah. just not quite exactly the same. Yeah. You're not being propelled by the exhaust. You know? Right. Right. The scramjet is uh, 
like I said, it's a variant of a ramjet, air air breathing jet engine in which com, uh, combustion takes place uh, just with little or no parts. It gets compressed and then it gets heated and blown out the back. Very simple, very easy to work on, and the greatest candidate for this type of missile uh, is that propulsion system. Yeah, yeah, because um, they wanted something that uh, it, it's wild. Look, we're going to get into this. This is crazy. This is how bad tensions got between Soviet Russia and American in America during the Cold War to where we needed to have something that would just annihilate Russia and then make sure that everybody in Russia just goes away and stays away. Right. And that nobody goes to Russia ever again. It's like the doomsday that's how, device. Yeah, that's how bad the beef was between America and Soviet Russia. Does it have to do with its construction? Like, since it it seems to be mm-hmm. filled with nuclear material, like not even just like bom- like bomb. Yeah, no, right? it had. Uh, no, well, the the reactor itself was small, but it's still a nuclear reactor. The problem with this is, um, first of all, it was a nuclear powered missile, which in itself is just yeah, crazy. It right. was capable of going Mach three. Ooh. So, one of the biggest problems with this particular weapon. Um, is the fact that it had a nuclear, it was powered by a nuclear reactor, a small one, but still it reached the highest uh, temperatures. They needed to find something that would protect not only the, the, the missile itself, but all the motors and everything that controlled it. And they figured out a lot of things that were were issues going along with this missile like we had a working prototype quote mm-hmm. unquote and it just was never used obviously because we would know all about this shit but right yeah if we'd it ever was irradiated an entire section bad. of the planet yeah and you see right there number 19 is thermo nuclear ordnance so you got 1 2 3 4 That's 5 6 what's 7 8 9 here. 10 11 12 13 nuclear warheads Jesus. um and what's 31 the solid rocket boosters three boosters right and then the damn the the engine itself South. What are we talking about as far as yeah. payload is concerned? Uh, well, you know, that's um, we can look uh, up. The, we uh, can look it up, but it it, it could have been it, it could have been more or less than what they're reporting because you can just you you the nuclear weapons as soon as they were made and invented and used they the power in them just rose up exponentially throughout the years oh and, yeah and, this uh, is just saying it would carry those that's in, see, that's crazy you see how it's called the uh the slammed a supersonic low altitude missile that's very important the supersonic low altitude missile like i said it can go up to mach 3 but it's low altitude to fly under the radars so it wouldn't be detected by the russians right. and by under the radars we mean slightly above tree level right so you got something that will be launched from america and fly low altitudes out to where to out to the ocean where it would circle indefinitely yeah. until we gave it the go to go to russia it would go to russia mach 3 drop its ordnance which was what thirteen nuclear warheads, and yes. then because it was powered by a nuclear radi- uh, nuclear reactor, it's not going to run out of power. So we just control it and tell it to circle over all of Russia. Jesus, and you're thinking that how they, you got thirteen warheads? Russia is a big country. Yeah, that's not a lie. And you're like, yeah. well, how can we make sure? You said that it was going to completely wipe out the country and make sure that nobody would be able to survive in it or go to it for the foreseeable future. How is that? You're not explaining it. Well, I'll tell you, because it's powered by a nuclear reactor, the exhaust is also nuclear, which means wherever it flies, (laughs) wherever it flies, the exhaust is going to rain down nuclear waste and nuclear radiation on people below it. With it going Mach 3 at such a low altitude, the scientists said that even the shock waves from that, the su- the, like the, the sonic booms, would mm-hmm. kill people on the ground. What? Yeah, and then you have, look, I mean, it, we've heard sonic booms. Yeah. But those yeah. sonic booms are miles away yeah, from a plane a that's like away. at least 30,000 yeah. feet in the and air. that's Mach 1. Yeah, and we're talking about something that's Mach 3 that's flying right above the trees. Jesus. And it's hauling ass so that wherever we, land, we launched it from, um, we got the uh, probably the rocket boosters. at some point too would have been launched from like a ship or something. I mean, yeah, they, they they figured it out. 
that instead of launching it, they wanted to launch it from the ground, but, but the they, idea, they used though, the solid boosters to launch it from the ground out to the ocean. Yeah. Then they uh, engaged the, the reactor core, and then that's what's going to keep it in flight for indefinite future. But then, but obviously then the idea is that since it's nuclear powered and it's a Ram air jet that, or scram, uh, uh-huh. that it would, you could literally launch it. Mm-hmm. It could fly indefinitely. Yeah. And yeah. then fly to its targets. Yeah. Maybe even just drop a few bombs. Yeah, and then go back. Yeah. Or just keep flying around. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, and then that, and that's oh, exactly something going on over want. here. And then, and what if you had 10 of them? Right. What if you had 20 of them? Right. That's global domination. It is. And I, I'm assuming it just did, it didn't work out that way. It didn't work out. Because perpetual nuclear-powered flight seems pretty difficult. It, man, it was, At first, it seemed like very difficult, but they figured out a lot of the, the issues that arose, mostly how to keep everything safe and uh, not safe, but like functioning right. while being that close to radiation and the heat that, mm-hmm. that is caused by having radiation. We're talking about like 20, 2,100 degrees Fahrenheit, at least Good that God. much. Yeah. So... The government was like, hey, this is this is awesome. Matter of fact, let me write this down. Uh, shit. Now, matter of fact, I'm just going to say it right now. There was two things that they needed to do. They needed to find a paint that would, that would withstand heat that high, and they yeah. needed to find something to coat the electronics. And they did that by getting ceramics from this company that you may have heard before, uh, the Coors Company. Yeah. It sounds kind of familiar, right? It does. Yeah, that company made on, they went on to uh, make um, something, uh, wait, is it called? Uh uh, Coors Beer. Yeah. That's the same company. Yeah. So that company, the Coors Beer, the people that have the blue mountains on the damn can that let you know that the beer is cold, they provided the ceramics to the United States government for use in Project Pluto. Those ceramics covered the electronics and kept them warm or kept them cool enough to that they can... They can operate indefinitely on this missile that's powered by a nuclear reactor that would fly indefinitely and then destroy a whole country just because, just because. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> the other way that they had, that they used to, to, um, to combat the heat was the scientists found a specific paint from a hot rod magazine Good and God. they ordered it from that magazine and used it in the missile and it worked during test that says something horrifying about what people were painting their cars with right yeah like that was meant some, i mean that's crazy so the dude was probably in like a completely closed garage <laughs> smoking cigarettes right and like using that paint on his car right and it's fucking like liquid ceramic or some shit yeah i mean like, that's pretty much what it was and it's something that the government didn't have they had got it from a damn i want to be cut out of this video this is a very unflattering angle <laughs> don't look at my tits don't look at my tits sorry they had uh they got that from a hot rod magazine. Screen it and just use this much. I can split screen it. And just I'm gonna I'm much. gonna take it. You know I know I'm you're gonna, gonna do, do big things. Of yeah. course, yeah, because you don't do a video every week. Nah, you yeah, know what I mean. So that's got to be something big. Hell yeah. And then with the overlay of the audio too. Nah, yeah, nah, we gonna yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah. gonna do this shit real big. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna rogan it. You must. We can rogan it. We can do we can do better than rogan actually. Yeah, I think we can do better, better. than rogan. I think I can do better than being a sixty year old man trying to be cool is rogan 60 for real he's in up there is it really you know what's wild is i was just watch i was watching um uh it was an episode i really liked that was from oh i was watching the paul stamets episode the mushroom guy yeah which is fantastic i think that was two years ago Mm -hmm. and then i was watching uh one recently with like uh, duncan or fucking ari or one of one of those guys but uh i was watching one recently and i was like wow that was only like he looks like he looks like he's aged 10 years in the last two years. Like Damn. as far as like his face and shit right. is concerned. Yeah. I think it's all that testosterone replacement and steroids. Yeah. 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 No, it is. I mean, and I'm talking shit because obviously yeah. John Ruggins is the fucking yeah. father of all of this. But right. that, that I've, you know, eventually yeah. you become David Letterman and people can be like that. That's enough of that. Yeah. At least we can make fun of him. Yeah. At least we, uh, you he know, does we're get here the interviews. That. He does get the interview. We're going to get interviews too. I had, f- I had fucking too. Adam we Mitchell on this podcast. Fucking, we can get the interviews too. We got it. Uh, we we got it. We can do that. Twenty twenty is going to be big. Like I said, uh, 
Yeah, but a nuclear missile with a, <laughs> a nuclear scramjet engine Shit is that, horrifying. Would, that would heat and Perpe- heat the exhaust forever. Yeah, that's what it is. So they, the, the heat idea- came from the nuclear right. the reactor, and that's where you get the propulsion from it. And it's but, nuclear, so it would just run forever. But that's what I'm saying. So the idea here was that they were essentially attempting to discover mm-hmm. perpetual flight. No, they did. But they didn't. They, they didn't use it because it got scrapped. But do you think that they really perfected the, like, you don't think that's ever been revisited, the idea of something that could fly forever? Yeah, there's Especially so many. Especially you're talking there, about there's, drones. There's wars, not wars, but there's international laws and sanctions that prevent the use of nuclear stuff for other than for Other for than that. submarines? Yeah, shit like that, bro. Weird. Like those submarines will last forever. They have nuclear engines. That is yeah. essentially our version of perpetual energy. Yeah, it's just that when you do, when you have something that's nuclear, because we're humans and we know what nuclear does, then it's very hard for people to to accept that risk. I will say, in defense of there being international concern about mm-hmm. America developing a fleet of unmanned aircraft that yeah. can fly forever, right? Um, is, well, this is just any country, not well, right. you know, mostly, especially America. I'm just saying but yeah. because we would have been the initial culprits of this, yeah. especially then. Mm-hmm. Like, if at the rate we were developing technology then, we would have been yeah. fucking easy. It would have been like, oh, we got to make this law so America doesn't do this. Right. But you consider, like, the idea, I could understand their apprehension not only from, like, a strategic standpoint, but mm-hmm. also, like, Okay, so how many are you going to build, and how many of them are like fall on a school every year? Right, that was or the like thing. irradiate a downtown of you know some yeah. town in Europe. But see, that's you know? a, that's the thing that uh, people said because there were there was also going to be a nuclear powered bomber and a nuclear um, uh, there was going to be a nuclear rocket for space travel, but all that shit went to waste because everybody was so anti nuclear. That does seem silly to not use it for that. Yeah. Although, again, in defense, you have to put it on a fucking rocket and mm-hmm. it's shoot it up. You yeah. Know? And if it like if it blows up, I'm not saying it'd be like a nuclear bomb going off, mm-hmm. but you just blew up a bunch of fissionable material that's just raining down now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there so are risks associated. That, there is, with it. but that when in in uh, in reference to Project Pluto, what they did was instead of just using the the nuclear the the engine the nuclear engine. They had the solid rockets that will get it out of the country and get it overseas so that when they activate the uh, the scramjet, it would be in a safe area, quote unquote. Um, I could see something like NASA doing that to where when it gets to space, you can um, yeah, you activate, can activate it activate and it. then yeah. that's what you use. I don't see why they haven't done that. Um, if we do, if we can, we can combine what you said about the probe, the ball probe mm-hmm. that we can send into space, and then we could put that on a a spaceship that has a nuclear powered um, engine. Yeah. That way, we're not we, humans are building it, but we're not losing any humans in case it explodes. Right, and we can get it to space. We can definitely launch it to space. Yeah, especially and then if- once it's there. It's got a un it, like a, a power source that's not going to run out. Yeah, especially if the propulsion supplied by a nuclear engine is significantly better than just you yeah, because there's no gravity or friction, so it's like if right. you shoot something out at a certain speed, oh yeah, it's just going to keep it's going, just keep going fast. constantly. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you could give it a burst, well, and that's something that people had theorized in the past too, is like you know taking a vessel or mm-hmm. something. And taking it out far enough away from the planet yeah. and detonating a nuclear warhead mm-hmm. X amount of distance behind it and mm-hmm. using that, that is as a force. Like the force. That's one hell of a force. Yeah. That's a lot of power. Yeah. They've done asm- atmospheric nuclear testing, but I would be super yeah. curious to see a nuclear warhead detonated in like not orbit, like empty space, like between here and the moon. Yeah. Like what would that look yeah, like? Yeah, I don't know why they haven't. They, I think they were going towards that, but then... Yeah. There was that whole anti anti nuclear sentiment between all humans, and it really killed the way the that nuclear proliferation treaty though is pretty I, important. I, I it, it is, it is, I but think it was important. It it is because we didn't want to kill each at other least with nukes. Psychologically, for me, it's important that it, <laughs> yeah. and that it happened at some point. Right, and that I didn't grow up in a world where it was just like the escalation was like you know you like blink into existence in the yeah. mid '80s, and there's and like because you know by the time we come into our stream of consciousness, everyone's like whoa 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 yeah yeah because hey, hey, we missed hey, all hey, that hey, other hey, stuff hey. yeah yeah we missed everything yeah. before that. But see, there needs to be a, a, a split between the militaristic 
versions of nuclear power and like the everyday versions of nuclear power. There's a civilization out there that just uses nuclear power for everything. Probably. And I'm sure they went through a couple years of rough patches where yeah. you have like oh, a shit. nuclear powered uh, you have like a nuclear powered oven or something and it will explode and level a fucking building or something and yeah. then you got to figure out why the problem is nuclear power in itself isn't a problem it's the 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 um the the chance of what happens when it goes bad right. because like we don't Fukushima. have we don't have a way of combating radiation once it has already started affecting people like we can we have medications that slow it but we don't have medications that 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 will well, yeah, like we don't have like a nuclear vaccination, right. you know. Well, that's the cool like on Star Trek where they have the the inoculations. Like, oh, you've yeah. been affected, you've been exposed to too much radiation. Here's right. an inoculation against it, right. right? Because it's rewriting our genetic code. Yeah, you know it, it, it's like, it's destroying it. It, it's it depends destroying on destroying the building blocks. Yeah, of what it, make it, you depending who on you the are. level that it is, that it's destroying. And for those who not. There's some people out there that aren't familiar with radiation. There's different levels of it where gamma radiation is like the worst, and you have like alpha particles, and it goes all the way up to Dude, G. So have you seen have you seen that anime video of Hiroshima that that Japanese artist made? I think I have seen it. Oh, I've seen snippets of it. Uh, okay. Well, because yeah. I was gonna say maybe it's something like to close out your podcast as you're doing a video, right? And you even have you you're gonna you're be doing edits and right, shit, right? Maybe you could close with just that, like it put us in like a tiny box underneath it. Yeah, let's do that because it is fucking yeah. sick. Yeah. If you've never seen, I'm gonna it. put the graphic of the missile and everything. Above and you can it rip and shit then, yeah. off of YouTube and all that. Oh right? yeah, okay, yeah, good. yeah. Because yeah, yeah, we, got, we totally got this shit. Yeah, yeah we got it. Yeah. Yeah. As, yeah. It's yeah. important, dude. This, 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 this year, 2019. We have made so many advances just doing podcasts together oh, yeah. that is blown this shit out of the water. So, yeah, we're looking up now. Um, while we're looking up this video, uh, subscribe to the One Gram Army podcast. Make sure you subscribe to Pod Caviar. This is the first video, first of many. Um, I'm going to do my thing and then make it banging it for those of you who's been with me since day one and you saw the old game caviar videos it'll be something on the lines of that um but an updated version of it so stay tuned it's going to be amazing also check out shirt caviar and um my twitch channel twitch.tv slash not having it i will put all that in the description and you can subscribe to me and follow us on on uh twitter i am twitter.com excuse me slash not having it and graham yours is uh, at one underscore graham underscore army on all social media yeah yeah, uh, yeah and also you know i'm sure you have google is that michael vick nah i don't know i'm trying <laughs> to find this is the guy that posted it oh, okay it wasn't on youtube oh shit okay which was, was that's obviously weird it was a big problem and my uh, man's here fuck. is a giant uh he's, he's a muslim yeah, fellow yeah that's uh, a where in the fuck is it what the fuck? He posts a lot of stuff. No, see, that's from December. Where's the goddamn thing? Maybe they told him to take it down. Maybe this is his old page. I yeah. don't know what the fuck's going on here. Here, you want to do like a clap so you can do an edit here? But yeah, while you're looking up that, I mean, fuck the whole you. thing about nuclear, I think that because fuck you, Internet. That we really limited ourselves as humans uh, and stirred away from the nuclear thing, that we're um, we're not going to be able to... to um, take that next step until we find an alternative that is as powerful and as useful as nuclear energy without the negative aspects of nuclear energy and nuclear power and that's going to be something that's very hard for us to do because it Found is it. it is very hard to substitute something as powerful as nuclear energy and nuclear power so let's just go ahead yeah well let's go ahead and play that um what what is it what time is it uh, well, you're 2458, but you've got at least five minutes to cut, cut out, and this is at uh, least three minutes. That's or so. three minutes right there. So it's a podcast. Um, yeah, I mean it's a podcast. Look, it's an episode. We got the we got the point across. So. I would say you may want to edit the audio and like you may want to sync the audio and video for this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna edit do them that both at then, the same time. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. That I was just thinking about that. To cut out right. the video and right. like, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, but I yeah. would want to and then and then just export the audio out of that when you're done. Yeah, I'm gonna do that because otherwise it's gonna. Yeah. be a fucking wreck oh yeah and this is called immortal apocalypse i'll save it for you okay um but yeah uh we talked about it we talked about nuclear power 
Project Pluto, a.k.a. the Flying Crowbar. The reason why they called it the Flying Crowbar is because it looked like a crowbar and it was a, a good design. They said that it, that it was designed so efficient that it was very easy to work on and it wasn't, it wasn't complicated at all. It was, I would say it was the most efficient um, killing machine that may have been ever that that certainly that ever, ever designed ever designed yeah absolutely and it was almost a reality that Jesus. means that if they had went along with this russia wouldn't be a country and they would still be out there flying around there would probably be one in the middle of the ocean flying right. around and then one flying around where russia used to be like yeah. irradiating it every yeah. fucking day or irradiating it every day right or that or we would just live in a world where those were constantly flying around yeah and every yeah. time there was any little How, hiccup in agreements between yeah two countries yeah that that's would what be i was it. saying though yeah. like that's the future we would have lived in yeah if they, like and then a country would be like here's this money we would be like mercen uh, mercenaries for other countries or we would just be that country to where yeah. i mean we kind of sort of still are they'd all be flying into each other over yeah. the top of these countries right and then that would be even worse yeah. could you imagine how syria would have played out if every country involved had those yeah, yeah. no nah. yeah yeah it would be like, look, you either have these or you don't. Not that that's the not done that... playing out, but nobody seems to give a shit anymore. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. No, nah, they were too worried about the Amazon wildfires. And yeah. I told you, I said the other thing on Facebook is like the people that are smuggling baby cheetahs out of Africa. Yeah. And then that's going to be the new thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It and all started with that Coney guy. And the Amazon just keeps on burning. Yep. And all kinds of other horrible shit's always yep. going on. Two weeks, two weeks. You have a lifespan of two weeks on social media. If you don't yep. make an impact to extend it, you're done, and it's something new. And that's yep. it. Yep. But yeah, um, check this out though. All right, yeah, let's play this, and then we'll you know wrap the fuck you know the fuck I am. I, we know, the look. camera's back there. Sorry. <laughs> you know the fuck I am. God damn it. <laughs> I need to explain it. Yeah, let's let's uh, let's Just play this. Look, s subscribe to One Grand Army Podcast. Subscribe to Pod Caviar and sh shop at shirtcaviar.com. I'm Tony. That's Graham. This is Pod Caviar. We're going to wrap this shit up, and then it's going to be amazing. You're going to see it, and you're going to love it. Thank you, and good night. I'm looking forward to it.